Hello and welcome. Today we are going through quite a few pieces of new makeup. We have things from Farrah Hamidi. I have a lip palette, face palette, which I did do first impressions on by my extended thoughts, a brush, a lip pencil. So I tried to get a little bit of everything that she has launched so far. We also have an SPF blush from CL, SPF lip products from Tatcha and Supergoop, and the new Addiction Tokyo face powders. And these were gifted from Addiction Tokyo. Thank you so much. This is one of my favorite brands. And I have to say, I'm just gonna lead you off with this. These powders, these are powders for people who hate powders. So, I mean, they work well for people who love powders too. But uh, yeah, definitely, if you are not a powder person, check these out. So let's go ahead and start with the powders then. So Addiction Tokyo, if you're not familiar with them, I've had a couple of videos with them. I am working on another big swatch video for things I've added to my collection since the first video. <laughs> but this is a Japanese brand and they now have a US uh, retail site. So here in the US, you are able to purchase them. They are still not available everywhere, unfortunately, but you know they're obviously expanding. So one of the great things about their products you can buy everything like individually and put them in your own palettes. So this is how the powders come. You buy the refill. So this here is like a plastic packaging here and it feels, you know, like that thin recycled plastic. And then this is the actual palette. So when, or the actual product. So if you were to put this into a palette, um, this is not a magnetic pan. So if you want to buy the palette separately, you can get the powder case and they sent me one of these. So this is what the case looks like, but you can also put this in some of their other palettes and so forth. And what you would do in this case, we can, um, just kind of drop that in, but it will come out. So what you want to do and what they recommend is adding a drop of glue and I've used a uh, hot glue from a hot glue gun. That's my preferred method there. So this is the case for that. This is very similar to the Surratt case. So they're not the same, but this is the Surratt petite case. Well, this is the bronzer case. So I think the petite should be the same size. I actually don't have the petite one, but you can see that they are similar in size. So just something to know. I don't think though that they are um, going to be the exact same dimension. So you can't transfer them, but we do have kind of the same idea of how to put the products in. Notice that we do have holes here in the back. So if you do glue it in, you are able to still pop it out. And I think, you know, if you get the glue dots, you can buy glue dots, uh, those work well, or hot glue from a hot glue gun. You know, it's really easy to peel off and re-glue somewhere else. So we have three new powders here. This here is the Silky Blur Setting Powder in shade 001 Natural Beige. And let me go ahead and I'm gonna put these kind of on my hand so you can kind of see a little bit of a, you know, blurring effect there next to it. So this one here, it has more of your satin matte kind of finish. So it's matte, but it's not a flat matte. There's no shimmer to it or anything like that, but you can see you still get, you know, some light reflection naturally off of that. And then we have two of the Skin Reflect setting powders. This is number 001, Translucent Glow. And you can see putting that next to the beige here shade wise they look pretty similar so let's go ahead and swatch these together now this one here again translucent glow you can see it is a little bit deeper in color uh, when you swatch that and we have more of a satin finish to this this one here though is a little bit more it's a little bit warmer and a little bit a little orangier then the other shade in the Skin Reflect setting powder, this is 002 Translucent Pink. So let's go ahead and look at this one. Just gonna get a little more. You can see that very little powder comes up at once, but it's still plenty to actually swatch. And this is why I'm saying this is like great for people who don't love powders because you're getting the effect of powder on the skin. You're getting that mattification, that setting process but you don't have a traditional powder that has powdery dust or anything like that. So these are the three. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at some demos here so you can see these on the face. So all three of these powders have six and a half grams of product and they are made in Italy. Let's start off with this silky blur setting powder. This is the soft matte finished powder, the first one that I swatched. So I have shade natural beige. This is currently the only shade that they have. And this is described as a natural soft matte beige that blends with all skin tones. And I have to say it blends out very well. As I mentioned, this is kind of a powder for people who don't love powders because you don't get that powdery dust, but it still goes on, gives you that mattification. Now, according to Addiction Tokyo, this is a blurring powder that even skin tone for a hydrating and smooth complexion with a matte finish. Long lasting formula that sets makeup and prevents shine. And it does know th that you are purchasing the refill and the case separately. So definitely make sure you pay attention to that. If you want the case, you have to buy that separately. Recommended application would be to use a powder puff or a brush. Personally, I like to use a fluffy brush because I think less is always more with powders. You wanna kinda get that effect without having too much on. So what I like to do is, uh, you know, I like to use a fluffy powder brush. This one here that I'm using is a Koyoto monochrome powder brush and it picks up the perfect amount of powder and just kind of deposits it very evenly on the skin so you can see that I'm getting that soft matte finish but I don't look like I have powder on the skin it really looks like I've just kind of taken my look and mattified it a little bit so that is what I really like about these powders it's hard to overdo it you could even take a puff or a sponge and kind of press this into your skin for a little bit more product as well and this really, you know, it's a translucent beige, so it really does kind of blend in with any skin tone. You're using so little of it that even though it's darker than my skin tone, it works for me, and I think it would work equally well for those who have a darker skin tone than the powder. Now, the other two are the Skin Reflect Setting Powder, and we have two shades. We have the Translucent Glow, which is the one that's a little bit more orangey than the beige. And then we also have the translucent pink. And these are translucent in the truest sense of the word. So according to Addiction Tokyo, it's a transparent setting powder that blends into your skin and reflects light, giving it a natural glow and three-dimensional look. Long lasting formula that sets makeup, leaving smooth skin that is clear, powder free and glossy. A lot of times when we see a setting powder or a finishing powder that has glow in it, we're looking for shimmer. We're looking for some sort of sparkle. That's often what we see in those products. This is going to give you light reflection without any shimmer or sparkle. There's no glitter in this whatsoever, but it does give you a little bit more radiance. So I would consider this more of a satin finish while the first one was more of a matte finish. Between the two shades, I think the translucent glow is great if you are trying to cover any redness or you know just kind of even out your skin tone, while the translucent pink really adds a lot of brightness. I particularly like it dusted under the eyes, and you can see in the demo that it really adds some brightness under the eyes. You can see, a, in my opinion, you can see a big difference between the eye that has the powder versus the one that doesn't in the first part of the demo there. So overall, I think these are fantastic powders. And, you know, I think even people who don't like powder products because they have drier skin, this works for that. So if you like to use dewy makeup, but sometimes it's a little bit too dewy, dust on a little bit of this, you can see what it did to today's makeup look. You know, I can put it on there. Still, I'm going to get that radiance from that dewy makeup, but I'm going to have a little bit more of a matte natural appearance. So it it's not going to, you know, look like I really have anything on. If you're not wearing makeup, these powders are great to kind of just set your sunscreen and things like that too. So you have a little bit more of a mattified appearance. So overall, I think you really can't go wrong with these powders. It really just depends whether you want more of a satin finish or a matte finish. I have to say, I really love both of these. If I could only pick one powder for me it's a translucent pink because i can really see a big difference with the brightening under the eye i really love the effect that i get with that and i think it also adds a beautiful brightness to the skin 
My second choice would actually be the matte powder. So I think if you were trying to narrow it down to two, I think the matte powder and then the translucent pink silky powder, those both kind of cover all of your bases. You get the glow and you've got a matte powder, you've got brightness and you've got evening out skin tone. So that kind of really covers all of your bases, but all three of them are beautiful products. Highly recommend them. I know people are gonna ask me between the Clay de Poe and the uh, Burberry and so forth. So let's look at those real quickly. Let's start with the Clay de Poe. The Clay de Poe here is a translucent powder. It comes in the one shade. You can see already just with pickup, this is gonna be more of a powder. It goes on beautifully, gives you a nice soft blur. It blends out. But I have to say compared to the Addiction Tokyo powders, this is going to be more of a powdery powder in comparison. It's still not super powdery. It blends out beautifully, but it is a little bit drier on the skin than the Addiction Tokyo. So if you have drier skin, the Addiction Tokyo is a better option in my opinion. And here's the Burberry. Let's go ahead and we'll mix these all together here. This is a very thin, lightweight product, particularly when you are putting the center white shade in because that is going to be more firmly pressed. And I would say that the texture of this white pigment here, you can see it's a little bit softer than the Addiction Tokyo, like you're going to pick up a little bit more product, but it has a more similar finish. You can see the blurring effect that you get with all of these powders. I would say that the blurring effect is comparable amongst all of them. And last up, let's just take a look at the Sisley Blur Expert in Light. So if you're familiar with these powders, the texture of this is more like that of the Addiction Tokyo. It's a not powdery powder. However, this is one that it really works best underneath foundation to give you an enhanced blur. But if you're putting it on top to set your foundation and so forth, it's it can look a little dry or it might actually, like you have to blend this or buff this into your skin a little bit firmer so you can move your product underneath. The Addiction Tokyo is a little bit easier to blend and that one's actually intended for use on top of foundation. So I think it really depends on your purpose. This will give you an intense blur, but it's best underneath foundation. So those are my thoughts on the powders. I have to say they are all great. I think it's really gonna depend on what you are looking for as to which one is the best. But I think all of these powders that I've talked about recently are really phenomenal. However, I do wanna mention that if you do have dry skin, I think the best ones would be the Addiction Tokyo because they really give you less of that powdery look or finish than any of the others. So one more time with these swatches. We have the Silky Blur Setting Powder in Natural Beige here. Then we have the Skin Reflect Setting Powders in number one, Translucent Glow, and number two, Translucent Pink. So you can see that they're all gonna give you a bit of a blur. These two are satin, whereas this one here is going to be a soft matte. But again, it's not a flat matte, so you still get a subtle bit of radiance. And again, no shimmer in any of these. Let's move on to the Farrah Hamidi products. We're gonna start off with the Essential Face Compact, and this has a pretty extensive shade range. I have the shade Silvette, and we did already do first impressions. I will leave that video linked down below in the description box, but let me go ahead and swatch this. So this first shade here, this is a concealer shade that you can use kind of, you know, as an all over foundation concealer kind of product. And can see that it has the consistency of a, basically like a concealer stick. Think like Clay de Poe concealer stick. And then we also have a highlighter and this is gonna be a very silky highlight shade. We don't really have sparkle. You kind of have that dewy wet finish to it. But if you were to tap this on, it really does pretty much sink into your skin. It doesn't stay on top like some that we've seen from others. Now that is the face compact and they do sell refills by the way. And we do have this heavy duty metal compact. Think of the lip suede palettes from Westman Atelier. They're very similar to that, very heavy duty. The lip palettes come in the blue packaging here. We have the mirror here. Again, these are refillable. You can see we've got a little lip here to pull this out and then it just snaps back in. You can see we've got grooves for it as well, and there is a magnet. 
So I have the lip palette in red too. I'd originally ordered one of the new one, nude ones, but they canceled my order. So we have two things here. This here is a lip primer, and then we have our lip color. Now our lip primer is pretty much a translucent white. It gives a little bit of shimmer. So if you use that on top of your lip product, you're going to kind of soften the shade a little bit. And let's actually, we'll buff this one out and then I'll put it a little darker. And if you um, want to kind of get it a little bit more, you know, a little bit softer here, I'll show you if we put the primer on top what that does, you can see it's gonna just kind of subdue that color a little bit, like you have a veil on top. And I think it's a really beautiful, beautiful color. And I have to say, I like this product. In addition, I also purchased the lip pencil. There are lip pencils that kind of match these, and this one here is velvet. Let's go ahead and put that one right here. So you can see it's a pretty good match for red too. It is slightly more pink. And then the last thing I picked up from her line is this brush. So you can see it's dirty now, but you'll see it clean in the demo in just a minute. And we'll talk about this. It is a synthetic brush. And the first thing it made me think of was the Raymore 6.5. So we'll take a look at that as well. Let's move on to the demos. So I picked up almost everything from her line. I purchased mine from Violet Gray. There is also a lip brush, but that was sold out. So I was not able to get that. But we'll talk about the brush that I did pick up, the buffer brush, as we're going through these demos. And afterwards, we'll do some comparisons. Let's start off with the Essential Face Compact. So as I mentioned, we have a pretty substantial shade range for a product like this. There are 15 shades, and according to Farah Hamidi, this is more than a concealer, less than a foundation. This artist created complexion duo provides buildable, customizable coverage wherever you need it. Makeup artist Farah Hamidi created this two part hybrid complexion product to achieve the natural but perfected runway skin for which she is known. Smooth Veil Soft Matte delivers a velvety veil of coverage, while Shine Balm creates a luminous glow. Apply wherever coverage is desired and combine the two formulas for any finish that suits your mood, glowy or matte, sheer or full. Smooth Veil Soft Matte is an innovative hybrid complexion product that acts as either a foundation or concealer. With a skin-like finish and medium buildable coverage, the cushiony cream to powder formula expertly disguises imperfections and seamlessly blends into skin. Shine Balm is a universal translucent highlighter with a glass-like warm champagne sheen. Apply it over, under, or mix into smooth veil mat, soft matte for a custom finish or wear it alone for dewy radiance. The signature hand polish compact is refillable. So in my first impressions video, I mixed the concealer part and the shine balm together for under eye coverage. It makes a really nice, more luminous, radiant concealer. I really like it that way. So just something to know if you're looking to check that out, that would be in the first impressions video. This product has an 18 month shelf life. We have 3.7 grams of product and it's made in Italy. Now, I like to use this either with a finger application to get more coverage. You can definitely, you know, kind of smooth this on and it has a stiffer cream texture that is still really easy to blend out, but you wanna blend it out fairly quickly. So don't go like dotting it all over your face and then blending it out because parts of it might dry, you know, a little bit faster than others. So you, you wanna like work on an area at a time. Now, I've also used this with the Farrah Hamidi buffer brush that I picked up. And this is a really nice brush. We have kind of one side that's rounded and the other side that's flat. The flat edge is great for using with highlighter or targeting certain areas. Let's say that you are trying to clean up the eye area and you wanna use a little concealer to like sharpen a wing or something like that. That's what that straight edge is great for. The rounded side is great for applying this complexion product, kind of smoothing it out. It's also great for applying blush. So you'll see me use this uh, in the blush demo as well, but I think it is a great brush and I think is perfect for this product. And it really gives you the perfect light application. You could definitely go in and layer it for more medium buildable coverage. If you want more coverage right off the bat, definitely a finger application would be what I recommend. 
Now my thoughts on this product, I have to say I really like it. So I've been using this quite a bit since I picked this up and you can really customize your coverage. I think it is a great product. It lasts pretty well throughout the day. I do have a more extensive wear test in the first impressions video. And you know, I think it's a really nice product. And this is definitely something that is great for travel, it's great for touch-ups, it's great for those no makeup makeup days. I really love it. You're not gonna get full coverage from this without using a lot of product, but I really, I've been reaching for this a lot, especially on the days where I'm not wearing a lot of makeup. And, you know, at first my favorite method was the finger application, but I love this buffer brush with it. I really think it's a perfect brush with it. Now, I have tried some other brushes with it, like foundation brushes and so forth, but I really do feel like this particular shape of the buffer brush really makes it more ideal for use with this product. If you are interested in using a brush, I would definitely go with a smaller foundation brush. I have used the uh, the small buffing brush from Westman Atelier with this as well, but that one's a little bit more dense. That's great for more uh, spot correction in certain areas, but if you're trying to blend it out to get lighter coverage, I think something like this is a little bit of a better option, but I do have some alternatives, so we'll look at the brushes in a couple minutes. As for the Shine Balm, I personally really like it as a highlighter. It also works really nice for, you know, highlighting the brow bone mixed into this concealer portion for under the eyes for a little radiance. It, you know, you don't need a lot of it to get that radiance. So it really kind of sinks into your skin. It's not sticky or tacky at all. It doesn't feel greasy and you're gonna keep that shine throughout the day. So I think it's a really great product. Overall, I have to say, I think this is a wonderful product. And I think, you know, she has kind of made her mark already on the cosmetics industry, not just with her work, but I mean, with her current lineup, I'm really enjoying these and I cannot wait to see where she goes next. Let's take a look at the lip products. Now the lip products, again, this packaging is the same size as the face compact. So we have 3.7 grams of product, 18 month shelf life, it's made in Italy. The only difference here is our packaging is light blue instead of red. Those primer shade, I have to say, is really comfortable. It is a silky balm. It feels kind of like one of those, you know, the matte lip balms that you can buy. It feels a little bit more hydrating than those, uh, kind of like a melted version of a matte lip balm. So that's what it feels like going on. It's comfortable on the lips, can give you a very thin veil. If you uh, need to prime your lips, you know, add a little lip balm before putting on any lipstick, this is a great product for that but I also really like using this on top to kind of dull the shade just a little bit and make it a little bit softer and lighter. The actual lip product, you can put this on with your finger application, kind of get a little bit more of that soft blurred finish. If you put it over the primer, you're definitely gonna get more of a blurred finish to your lips than if you're using it without the primer. Without the primer, you're gonna get kind of that deeper red shade and yeah, I think the primer really helps kind of blur it and make it look a little bit better. So overall, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You can also use a lip brush to apply this, which I do show you in the demo, and I'm using the Chikahoto AF8, which is one of my favorite lip brushes. Now to go along with the lip compact, I picked up the lip pencil as well, and I was really excited to try this. I have to say the lip pencil is it's a nice lip pencil, but there's nothing special about it. I do think that if you are using just the lip pencil and then you're like eating, it does not remain completely smudge proof. So the lip pencil I think is just okay. It is not a favorite, but I think the color is really nice and it does help create the longevity of the lip color if you are to pair them together. But again, it just doesn't remain completely smudge proof. You know, if let's say you're eating something and, you know, let's say you wipe your face with a napkin or something like that, you may smudge that lip liner. I, I know I did. So just something to note there, but I think it's a, a nice lip liner, just not a must have. So my overall thoughts on the lip compact, I have to say, I really love it. I don't usually like lip compacts. There are very few that I've liked over the years. I think this one is great because I think that primer is a really nice product. It's nicer than most that you find in 
products like this. You know, it stays hydrating, but it really kind of gives you a little bit of a satin matte veil to your lips and increases the blurring. So I really love that. I think this red shade is great. The formula is nice. It's long lasting. You can see in the four hour wear update how that performed, you know, so it's a long lasting shade. You can blur it out and get kind of a softer look. You can also build this up. So it's pretty versatile. And, you know, I wouldn't say it's hydrating on the lips, but it's not drying on the lips either. It kind of just is, you know, it just feels like, you know, a little bit of product on your lips. So I think overall it's a really great formula and I really cannot wait to get the nude one when it comes back into stock. So, uh, yeah, you know, right now they have a very limited range. There are only four shades. There are two nudes and two reds. So I hope they expand that, but I'm really loving this. So let's take a look at the brush here. Now, this is a pretty expensive brush for something that is synthetic, but I have to say it is a really great brush. So it retails for 62 US dollars. You can see we've got this beautiful curved side here and then this flat edge here. And handle wise is very similar to the Westman Atelier brushes. All right, so this here is the Westman Atelier Baby Blender. You can see mine is dirty right now, but I wanted to show you how these compare handle wise. So you can see here that the Westman Atelier are slightly longer, but we have kind of the same barrel handles. The Ferro Humidity is actually just a little bit wider in diameter. We have a glossy ferrule versus the matte, but they are similar and I actually wouldn't be surprised if they have the same manufacturer. So uh, the difference here with the shape this baby blender here, you can see this is round, it's pretty dense. This also works well with the Ferro Humidity face palette, but I do think that this will give you a little bit of a smoother finish because this, look at the way this rounded edge performs. It really kind of blends things out evenly and kind of just swipes on nicely. So the first brush that it made me think of was the Raymore 6.5. So this is the Raymore 6.5. You can see we also have kind of that rounded edge, straight edge here. You can see this is definitely gonna have more of an arch. It's more angled. This is more pyramidal shape compared to the Ferro Humidity, which is a little bit more rounded here versus see this is straight and then it has the shift, straight shift. Whereas this is gonna be a bit more gradual. So they are not the same but they are similar. If you have the Raymore six and a half, this, I think, you know, the performance is pretty comparable between the two. So I would say, you know, this is great for the eyes, which is what this is actually intended for. You could also use this one on the eyes as well. So just something to know. I would say that these two, although not exactly the same, they're similar enough that they are interchangeable. Another very similar brush that some of you may have, this is the Refer 36. And you can see this one here is natural hair. Both the Ray Morse and the Ferro Humidity are going to be synthetic. And you can see this shape is a little bit more like the Ferro Humidity. We've got more of that gradual uh, change there versus the sharper shift of the um, Ray Morse. And you can see that we have a similar arch here it's going to be much more shallow so these two here are pretty similar you can see performance here is going to be pretty comparable and i would say again if you've got this one this is another option and you know when refer does their sales this is definitely a you know more of a budget option compared to the Ferro humidity so last one i wanted to show you is the b01 from refer that just recently came out and this one here is great more for spot concealing, but you can see it's pretty dense. There's not gonna be as much flow with the bristles. So if you're looking for spot concealing, correcting, things like that, that's what this one's great for, but it's gonna be a little bit more dense. You can see we do have a bit of a curvature here, but it's going to be pretty gradual. We don't have that same flexibility in the bristles. These are, however, both synthetic options.
So overall, I have to say the Farrah Hamidi line, I think is really impressive. It's a great start. I think these products are fantastic for people who travel or people who like to carry makeup around with them, like in a handbag or something like that, or anybody who is more of a minimalist and you don't want a lot of products, but you want a lot of versatility with them. So that's really where these products shine. I think the packaging and the styling of everything is very luxurious. It's high end, you know, with this heavy duty metal compact and so forth. And the products themselves perform beautifully. So really happy with everything I've tried so far. Can't wait to see where she goes with eye products and so forth. I can definitely see a blush palette, you know, in a packaging like this as well. So yeah, can't wait to see where she goes next. Let's go ahead and move on to our SPF blush product. So this has mineral SPF. This is from CL and I picked mine up from Sephora. So I wanted to share this before the Sephora sale starting in like about a week. This has SPF 50 and these are relatively new. This one here is going to be the shade January and you can see it's kind of like this matte pink. Looks like a matte pink, but you can see there's a little radiance there. And it really shears out to get very soft. Now you can see that this effect has more of a matte blurring finish to it. You've got a little bit of light reflection there, making it not a flat matte, but there's no shimmer or anything like that. So it's still gonna be more of a matte finish. Let's take a look at the demos. So the shade January is described as a cool pink. I would have to say the photos of it online make it look a little bit more of a little cooler than it actually is and perhaps a little dustier. So I would say it's definitely a bit more of a carnation pink. And this is a mineral SPF 50 plus liquid blush. And that's really what, you know, kind of appealed to me. Just, you know, a little extra SPF protection for the summer. And it's supposed to blend into the cheeks with a creamy hydrating formula that gives a burst of color and a natural finish. This blush has five and a half milliliters of product. It's made in the USA. And our major active ingredient here is zinc oxide. There's 8% zinc oxide. So the application, the recommendations for that would be place a small drop on the center of your cheeks, blend with fingers, brush, or sponge, apply liberally and evenly before sun exposure. Now, personally, I like to use just a smaller amount, get kind of more of a subtle wash of color. Is this really gonna give me much sun protection with the amount I use? Not at all. So it's really just kind of like, you know, just adding a little extra, especially on higher points of your face that get a little bit more sun. I think it's always a good idea to add extra sun protection there. So I just thought this would be something interesting to try out, you know, for kind of those like summery beachy days or anything like that. Now, just like regular sun protection, you're gonna have to reapply this. And I have to say the color on this does fade throughout the day. You can see in the wear test that there is definitely fading. It kind of disappears by the end of the day. So this is a product that you would want to replenish throughout the day. Definitely do not rely on anything like this for a sunscreen. Now, a lot of SPF products have that kind of sunscreen scent to it. And I have to say, I don't really smell anything with this. Now, a lot of SPF makeup products have either that sunscreen scent or kind of that thicker mineral pasty kind of finish. And I have to say this really strikes a balance. It doesn't have either of those. So it's very thin, easy to apply. It makes a really nice soft flush. The product itself is a thin liquid, but it has a little bit of body to it. So it's not gonna be thin and watery. Uh, think of more of a thicker serum. And that's kind of the texture of this. And it I don't smell any fragrance with this and I don't see any fragrance listed on the ingredients either. So definitely something to note there. I think it's really well done formula wise. Now there's no like uh, expiration upon opening PAO or anything like that on the package, but on the box, you do get an expiration date. So mine is January of 2026, and I just purchased mine from Sephora. So, you know, that is basically two years. <laughs> so pretty good there. And 
Yeah, it does recommend that you need to shake this before use. Definitely do that, redistribute all of the ingredients. But overall, I think this is a nice blush for those days where you don't need makeup on for the entire day. Maybe you're going to the beach for an afternoon or something like that, or you know, for a few hours and you want some color on there, add a little sun protection but you don't need it to last all day. And that's where I think this product is going to fit in my routine. I think it's a really nice product for those purposes, but you're not really gonna get all day protection. Now I know for me, when I have to go sit outside at my kids' activities and I'm sitting outside baking in the sun, layered up in sunscreen, you know, sometimes I wanna wear a little makeup because I'm just sitting there with all the other parents and so forth. And that's where I will probably use this the most would be sitting outside at those kinds of games and events and things like that, just to add a little sun protection, but still looking a little put together. So Supergoop recently had a sale, I forget what it was for, probably Leap Day, <laughs> based on when I ordered everything. So they had a sale, I picked up a few things, I had to get a refill of my sunscreen, I always buy the big pump bottle, we leave it on the counter and so forth. And I've used some of their like color cosmetic products before, I've used their eyeshadows, which by the way, I really lo love that formula, it's got some SPF in there, that's definitely one that I really like, but I wanted to try their... Uh, tinted lip balm. So these are the Super Goop, you know, what is the name? It just says Broad Spectrum Sunscreen SPF 30 PA Triple Plus and it says Live Bright Smile Big. So I have the shade Lucky Me. This is going to be plastic packaging here, but not say it's like luxurious packaging or anything like that, but you're going to get very pigmented color with one swipe. The texture is smooth. It's comfortable. You get a sheen to it. And overall, I really like the color, but I don't love the product. So as you're looking at the lip swatches here, you can see it really goes on nicely. It's got a beautiful texture. I love all of those features. The one thing that has a drawback to me is it has a taste. There's a little bit of a minty sensation when you put this on. The fragrance that you smell in this is a little bit of mintiness. You kind of have that scent to it when you're putting it on. It's not super strong, kind of fades. But the big thing is I try not to lick my lips too frequently when I have lip products on, but even you know if you're not really doing that, you get a little bit of taste from this lip product. And I really, that's a huge drawback to me. It's a pretty, it just stays around for a while. So I'm just not a fan of that. So the name of these are actually the lip shades. So they're 100% mineral lip color and you know, we've got 17.5% zinc oxide in here. It's a nice product aside from the flavor, the taste. And according to Supergoop, it says it's your dream lip color plus UV protection in one. Balmy hydration meets a rich buildable tint that swipes on for effortless lip enhancing color. And I agree with all of that except for the taste. I wish they would take that out and then I would love this and use these all the time. But unfortunately, that's the drawback. So I wouldn't really recommend this particular one, but I love this color, Lucky Me. And I think it's a really nice, um, you know, I would say it's cranberry mixed with strawberry. You've got a little bit of that coolness from the cranberry and that depth, but you've got warmth from the strawberry in there as well. And it's pretty pigmented, very, very comfortable. Now let's go ahead and move on to Tatcha. Now Tatcha was kind enough to gift these products to me. The Silk Sunscreen is one that I have really loved since its inception. Uh, you know, I it was my favorite sunscreen when it came out and then it got really hard to find. And um, they were repackaging and so forth. So this here is, it's essentially the same formula that you, uh, may have tried in the past, but we now have a new package. Previously, the old package, it kind of, it was like a square, and it kind of, you know, when you would touch after a while, it kind of started to come off, you know, the actual colored portions and things like that. So this, we now have a pull top cap. This is our little spout here. I'm gonna put this right here, and you can see how this goes on. And what I love about the Tatcha sunscreen is that it's smooth, it has kind of like a smooth, silky, velvety kind of texture to it, and it acts really nicely as a makeup primer as well. So not only are you getting great sun protection, but it performs uh, more like a primer would and acts as a great base to makeup. 
And let me show you the application. I personally, I love this sunscreen. So this is a really fantastic product in my opinion, and it's definitely a go-to for me. Now, according to Tatcha, this is a weightless broad spectrum SPF 50 mineral sunscreen that provides powerful photo aging protection and neutralizes damaging environmental stressors while visibly evening skin tone over time. Light as air liquid blends in with a sheer radiant finish. And this is a new look. So we're looking at the same formula from before. It's recommended for all skin types, fine lines, wrinkles, dryness, and so forth. We have 50 milliliters of product and retails for 64 US dollars. And yeah, you know, this is, it's now at Sephora, a great time to pick it up during the Sephora sale. Tatcha also often has some deals or gift with product, gift with purchases. So I just think it's a really great product. Now, according to Tatcha, it says it's a weightless liquid sunscreen like you've never felt before with a radiant finish. The climate adaptive formula is sweat resistant and non comedogenic to minimize breakouts. It's got next gen UVA UVB protection from premature aging. So they're talking about their patented, uh, I'm not sure how to say this, clear zinc oxide combined with powerhouse antioxidants protect against UV damage and prevent premature aging, which is definitely a plus in my book. This breakthrough zinc oxide is proven to be 2.45 times more effective at protecting against free radicals than standard zinc oxide, which are shown to cause loss of elasticity in skin as well as fine lines and wrinkles. It instantly hydrates and visibly even skin tone over time. It has hyaluronic acid, squalene, niacinamide, and so forth. And for me, I just find that it works well under my makeup. It gives me my sun protection. I've used this you know, outside on those really hot beaming days without any pinkness or anything in my skin. And I think it just, you know, it's a beautiful product, great finish. So it's definitely one of my favorite sunscreens. And I have gone through a couple of bottles when it first came out in the old packaging. So I'm very excited to have it in the new packaging. Now, in addition to sunscreen, Tatcha has also brought out these new Kisu lip tints. And these are SPF 25. And yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at these. There are three shades. And by the way, just for reference, the sunscreen has 50 milliliters of product and it's made in the US. These lip tints are gonna be made in Japan and they have four grams of product. So we have three shades. We'll put these right next to the super goop. So this one here is called Plum Blossom. You can see that these are gonna be more sheer than the super goop with one swipe. Plum Blossom here is going to be more of a soft peachy coral. And then we have the shade Camellia. And you can see this is going to be kind of a soft sheer red. And yeah, it's a pretty neutral red, a little bit of warmth, but I'd say it's pretty neutral. And then the last one, this one's my favorite. This is Midnight Lily. And this one here is going to be more of a brownish mauve. You've got kind of that cooler tone in there. You've got brown base. It's really beautiful. So I've been wearing this one a lot. So you can see you can build these up. They're going to have a thin, comfortable texture to them. They feel like a lip balm. If you've used their um, Kisu lip mask, it feels nothing like it. It's really not something you could really compare it to. Packaging on here, you can see we've got the Tatcha logo here. It is a click closure. We have their logo on the top and this would be metal packaging. And yeah, you can see it's a really nice product, heavy duty. And if you are purchasing, we'll look at the lip swatches now, but if you are purchasing from the Tatcha website, Please note that they do have different sets, like you can get one of the lip tints with the sunscreen, you can get all three lip tints and so forth at different price points. So you get a discount by purchasing them as a set. You can also purchase these from Sephora, they are available there. Now, according to Tatcha, these are a creamy hydrating lip tint with SPF 25. They're blendable, they're buildable, they're made with silk protein and botanical lanolin. It's unscented, it hydrates lips, seals and moisture while protecting from sun damage. It has a smooth, non-sticky formula, keeps lips moisturized and comfortable while gliding on effortlessly thanks to nourishing silk protein and botanical lanolin. And I have to say, I love these. There's no taste, there's no fragrance, You've got beautiful colors. They're sheer, but buildable. And 
yeah, I'm really happy with these. So these I think are a really great lip product. Highly recommend them. If you are looking for an SPF tinted lip balm, this is great. If you're looking for just a tinted lip balm, these are great. So let me know what your thoughts are on all of these products. Let's do a quick summary of everything that we've covered today because we definitely went through a lot. First up, we went through the Addiction Tokyo Powders and we have the uh, Skin Reflect Glow Powder. So there's Translucent Glow and the Translucent Pink. I think these are great. They're gonna give you a satin finish. These are powders for people who love powders and people who don't. And then we also have the uh, Silky Blur Setting Powder, which is gonna give you a matte finish. And it's not gonna be that dry powdery matte. Again, you're using just a tiny bit of product that's pretty firmly pressed, but goes on smoothly, gives you a great effect. Absolutely love the Addiction Tokyo powders. I think they're probably one of the best pressed powder formulas on the market right now. But please note, refills and cases are sold separately. Moving on, we went and looked at the Farah Hamidi products. So we had the Face Compact, and that's right here, I have the shade Sylvette. We also went through the Lip Compact in Red 2, and the Lip Pencil in Velvet. Overall, I think that these are great. I would highly recommend the face palette and the lip palette. I think these are really nice products. Even for people who don't love lip palettes, this is just a really nice one. Great formulas, easy to use. Um, you know, I think the primer really makes a difference with this. Lip pencil, I think is just, it's okay. And then we also looked at the buffer brush, which I think is a fantastic brush but we checked out a couple alternatives to these as well that you might already have in your collection or may fit better in with your budget during a sale. So overall, great brand introduction. Very happy to see where she goes from there. Then we moved into the CL Liquid Blush. This is an SPF product. This is great for days where you don't need to have your makeup on all the time because it will fade. But if you're looking for a little extra sun protection because you're gonna be in the sun for an afternoon or something like that, this is a great product for that. I think it's beautiful, easy to use, great formula, no smell or issues with blending. And yeah, I would definitely recommend it for short-term use. Then we went into the Super Goop lip shades, which I love the color, love the texture and formula on the lips but it has a taste that I just can't get past, so I personally would not recommend that. We went into the Tatcha Mineral Sunscreen, which I absolutely love. This is a great daily sunscreen. Put this on you know, after my skincare every day. Works well as a primer. And then we also went through the Kisu Lip Tints from Tatcha, which again are right here. These three are Tatcha, this is the Super Goop. And I love these. I love the formula. I love the fact that there's no taste. There's no fragrance. I think they are a great formula, comfortable on the lips. So would highly recommend them. Overall, I think we covered some great things today. I'd love to know your thoughts on everything featured here today. Please let me know if you've tried anything and what you thought of them. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon.